They are the insiders, Darren Dreger and Pierre Lebron. Darren, it was a busy summer for Jacob Chikrin. He had some surgery to remove bone spurs from his ankle, had some more work done on his wrist, and now teams are circling to try to lure him out of the desert. Yeah, well, look, it, there's no secret that Jake Chikrin still wants out of the Arizona Coyotes, but the Arizona Coyotes still tell everybody that they're willing to be patient. Although, what is clear now as the regular season is fast approaching is that the trade interest in Chikrin is once again intensifying. Some say the Coyotes have softened to some degree, at least in their expected return, and are more willing now to take on a contract or contracts. Granted, You've got to have a first round draft pick. You've got to have a prospect involved in all of this. So the ask is still high. Now, some of the teams that are listed with interest include the Ottawa Senators, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Edmonton Oilers, the Los Angeles Kings, the St. Louis Blues, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and on and on it goes. However, it's a challenging one. Despite the quality of the player and the contract, there's some cap hurdles that many of the teams I just mentioned are going to have to overcome. Speaking of defenseman, Rasmus Sandin, of course, ending uh, his contract stalemate with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And this is an interesting one because, you know, after Jordy Ben went out with injury in the preseason game on, on Wednesday night, you could say, wow, more leverage again for Rasmus Sandin because the Leafs desperately need him back. But it sort of acted as a reverse uh, situation in the sense that Rasmus, Rasmus Sandin woke up on this day and said, you know what, I got to go help my team, spoke with Sandin's agent, Louis Gross, who said that's exactly what happened, that they reached out to Kyle Dubas, the GM of the Leafs, and said, okay, we're ready to end this. And Sandin signing essentially the kind of deal that the Leafs have had out there this entire time, although the Leafs were also willing uh, uh, to do a one-year deal throughout this process. But Sandin signs for 1.4 and puts his teammates, frankly, uh, ahead of what it could have been perhaps a bigger contract had he continued to hold out. You know, there was a bit of panic, though, setting in with the Toronto Maple Leafs, even during the game versus the Montreal Canadiens, when two defensemen went down and told that Leafs management was actually making calls around the National Hockey League, inquiring about some defensemen who are still in camp on PTO. So, no question, still trying to bolster the depth in that position. You know, guys, whenever a team is looking to upgrade its goaltending, people say, sure, that would be nice, but where are we going to go find an available goaltender right now? Is there a chance we could see one become available in Florida, Pierre? I don't think it's going to happen this year, uh, Gino, but there's certainly a lot of people that were intrigued when the Florida Panthers extended Spencer Knight to a three-year deal worth $4.5 million earlier this week, which starting next year gives them $14.5 million in total with Sergei Bobrovsky still on the books through 25-26 at $10 million. So, listen, I, I, I put a few calls out there, and here are a few things that I was told about this intriguing situation. One is that the Florida Panthers were legit worried that Spencer Knight would be offer sheeted next summer. And they didn't want to be put in a position where they couldn't deal with that number. They don't want draft picks. They're in their win-now mode, so they wanted to be aggressive and get ahead of the situation. The other thing I'd say is that, yeah, Sergey Borowski still signed long-term at $10 million a year. But as we've seen with Corey Crawford and Carey Price and Ben Bishop, goalies don't always age well. So we'll see how this plays out over the next two, three years as far as Bobrovsky and Spencer Knight. Uh, how about the Bruins? Uh, the Bruins' leading goal scorer from last season, David Pasternak, is going to the final year of his current contract. And is there news on that front, Dregs? Well, look, I mean, we're talking about a superstar player in Pasternak with the Boston Bruins. And uh, it's a process, and we use that word a lot when we're talking about extensions or negotiations, period. Both sides are assessing the market right now. I can tell you that, you know, contract discussions have heated up since camp has opened relatively quiet over the course of the summer. Not unusual. There were some preliminary discussions at the draft. You know, Pasternak understands and he's clearly hopeful that something will get done sooner than later, but the Bruins continue to do their due diligence. Darren Dreger, Pierre Lebron with this preseason edition of Insider Trading.